Hello, good morning. Some breaking news right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. The Raspberry Pi Foundation have just launched the Raspberry Pi 400. Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello, good morning. It's November the 2nd, 2020. Thank you for joining me here on Wi-Fi Sheet. My name is Tom and we are talking the Raspberry Pi 400, which if you haven't heard is a brand new Pi product officially released from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And it is their first all-in-one microcomputer unit that includes keyboard case all-in-one. To be honest with you, I have been wanting something like this for the past 22 years, ever since I was about 11 years old. So I am particularly excited about this product. Those of you that follow me and follow the channel know that I have actually been trying to do stuff like this in the past. I released my own kit a few years ago called the Micro One, which kind of did the same kind of thing. And then I released that more recently as a download Patreon, which you could build out of cardboard. However, I think this now pretty much supersedes all of that. So what is it? Well, I've got my iPad here. So let's just have a quick look at the official Raspberry Pi Foundation website. So we'll go along together with this. So this is the Raspberry Pi 400, your complete personal computer built into a compact keyboard. So it is going back to that all-in-one micro design that we've seen in the 1980s. It's a computer neat. Featuring a quad-core 64-bit processor, four gigabytes of RAM, wireless networking, dual display output, and 4K video playback as well as a 40 pin GPIO header. And it says Raspberry Pi 400 is a powerful, easy to use computer built into a neat portable keyboard case. So this is based on the Raspberry Pi 4 architecture. And I did wonder, was it the actual compute module which was released or announced, I think it was last week? Uh, no, and if we scroll right down, here we are, the next picture, you can actually see it is in fact a, a custom PCB, especially for this unit. Uh, you can see on the back here, so it's three USBs, you've got a network Ethernet port, you've got the two micro, or sorry, yes it is micro uh, HDMI, I get confused between mini and micro, micro HDMI, you've got, uh, I think that's the power, USB-C for the power, the SD card, micro SD card reader, and you've got the, uh, the GPIOs, which are still present, but the plug standard has changed. So... This is a particularly powerful machine. One of the other uh, distributors here in the UK specified that the machine is going to be clocked to 1.8 gigahertz and had an additional heat sink or something fitted. Um, I don't see the heat sink in this particular, or do I? I'm not sure. Uh, there might actually be an additional heat sink allowing this thing to run. That would be the fastest the Raspberry Pi has ever run stock. Do not underestimate what I'm saying. This is huge. Now, those of you that follow me here on the channel will know when the Pi 4 originally launched, I was less than impressed with it. And there's still some niggles with this that I'm not particularly happy with. Mainly the HDMI standard. I, I really have an issue with that port standard. But failing that, don't get me wrong. This is cool. This is a game changer. With my time working, especially in the education sector, Schools have been, especially teachers, have been really, really reluctant to adopt the Raspberry Pi. In fact, I won't name the school, but it's one school here in the UK, sort of around the West Midlands, who actually said they weren't going to use or even adopt the Pi because the Burr circuit board posed a health and safety electrocution risk. It runs on 5 volts. You can do more damage with a 9 volt battery. I'll just let that sink in a minute. Yeah. So the excuses and the excuses for not adopting... The Raspberry Pi, but saying that, if you think about this, I'm talking to you and we're all tech people probably. So we're kind of more accustomed to working with chips and circuit boards and we've all got used to the Raspberry Pi at the very least. A thought of a Burr board computer can still scare some people and that's totally understandable. So for the Pi Foundation to now give this in a form factor that is a complete packaged microcomputer unit in a plastic case with a keyboard, I think that's going to be really, really accessible to a lot of general consumers as well as the education sector. And if you think about it, this sort of form factor, which I had with the Micro One products, was really useful for taking into exhibitions, Pi Jams, complete computer, just plug in a monitor mouse, and it's all there ready to go in one form factor. So I can already see this being a huge hit, especially with schools, 
pie jams and of course for us to the hobbyist sector. So what's it likely to be used for? Well it's not really looking like it's going to be a tinkerer's machine so I think it's fair to say that this unit is very much based on the idea of consumption of media and perhaps the coding and software side of things which would lend itself very nicely to RetroPie. Think about it, RetroPie we've normally geared it up towards game consoles so we've had like the generic box that we've built, we plugged the USB clone NES controller or SNES controller in and away you go. Of course RetroPie does a lot more than that, it does emulate the keyboarded system so think things like the C64 ZX Spectrum, the Atari computer lines, Amiga and even DOSBox for Windows PC type stuff. This would be fantastic for that and of course we've now got some of the power behind it. I don't think we're going to see PS2 or uh, GameCube type stuff on it but imagine kind of Windows 3.1, Windows 95 being able to run under DOSBox on this and it would do it really really well. So I see huge advantages there. It's also in the schools, this would be the first time, if the schools adopt this, this would be the first time since uh, the sort of all-in-one micro standards you saw in the US with the Apple II and here in the UK with the BBC Micro. First time schools would have a brand new all-in-one micro type computer for use in education, all this time running the same de facto Linux standard. The price point on this is actually not bad as well. Now I have ordered one today, it broke this morning the news, I've ordered one, it might be with us tomorrow. I paid £70, that's probably off the top of my head just shy of US dollars that included the tax and the shipping. If you take the tax and the shipping off the units actually come to just over £50 and education would be able to buy at that price. So it's not a bad price although my package didn't include the power transformer and the mouse. If we just go back to the website, let's have a look at the back of this unit then. So. As I mentioned, you've got the three USB ports. One USB port is missing, but I have a feeling the keyboard is probably tied into one of the USB 2 buses. Uh, the same thing was done with the C64 and the VIC-20 uh, modern clone computers. They actually used the USB link to link their inbuilt keyboards with the motherboard. So I reckon this Pi does exactly the same thing. Micro SD, well, that's fine. It's a de facto standard. There's no onboard SSD or solid state uh, storage on this which is a shame but again not totally surprising. Um, I'm just seeing actually looking at this picture is that a ribbon connector for an external monitor I wonder? Interesting. So yeah there's definitely got to take this unit apart when we get one to see what's actually going on under the hood. You've got the two micro USBs again this is a thing for the Pi 4. I now have the adapters I've been doing a project with Raspberry Pi 4 called The Forte, which you may have seen when we did the recent live stream for uh, Risk Arrest London. Um, so it's a, it's a different uh, Pi product. And that'll be a special desktop machine based around and built for Risk Arrest Direct, which by the way, will be coming over to Pi 4 very shortly. Um, I actually broke adapters in my prototype building. I, I, I said from day one, this standard was gonna be a problem. I think in this it'll be less of an issue because it's the it's encased. Uh, it's just annoying. I think I would have preferred one full size HDMI lead if I'm honest. But uh, I suppose the twin monitor thing for those OSs that support it is pretty cool. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit on the fence for that. I'm gonna be <laughs> I'm gonna be grumpy about it, but I'll I'll live with it. Same with the USB C. I wasn't happy about the USB-C power supplies originally, but to be honest with you, I kind of get that now. Uh, I think at the time I was more grumbly about the Pi 4 because it didn't it didn't seem to do an awful lot more, just seemed to be the same kind of form factor, but you had to replace all your adapters and power supplies, and that's what annoyed me about it. This is more exciting because it's a completely new form factor, and it is something I've just wanted for such a long time. So yeah, I'm my views on this are much more positive. And as I said, I have now ordered one, so we'll hopefully get to have a look at one real soon. As I said, it's not going to be a tinkerer's board. It does have the GPIO on the side, but it's a completely different form factor. So it's using a, I believe it's a male-based socket. So it's a 40-pin uh, ribbon-based socket. Ironically, the kind of thing you actually saw on the original BBC Micro for the floppy drive interface. So expect to see some kind of adapter boards because your hats aren't going to fit into that problem. Uh, well, no, your hats aren't going to fit into that, I don't think. So 
see some sort of adapter boards, kind of like the cartridges or add-on boards we've seen with things like the Acorn Electron and the Sinclair ZX Spectrum back in the day. Uh, so that's exciting possibilities. It's actually not too difficult to build your own adapter board, and that's something we might do here on the channel. Um, as I said, it's not really a tinkerer's machine, so it's going to be very much about software consumption, media centres, gaming, that kind of thing. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I also think it's probably going to be aimed at developing in third world countries. You could, you could actually use these, you can run a business off one of these. If it's, for example, fast enough under Linux, then you could run open office. You could do all your office accounting, your web browsing, that kind of thing. Um, even in this country, let's say after the, after the COVID recession's over, um, you know, some small startups may need small portable machines, low price point that can just do simple IT based activities. And of course this can. So it is a change. And initially I was a bit unhappy about that sort of change, moving away from the kind of STEM coding tinkering. But at the same time, this as a product covers so many different bases that I'm actually, I can live with that. And I think it's, it's beneficial for so many people, including us that like the more hobbyist tinkering elements. Just looking back at it, there is of course, a possibility that you could take that board out and possibly use it to power or reboard uh, an old 80s micro BBC micro C64. It might go in a uh, Zenex Spectrum. I don't know. We'll have to see what the form factor is like. But there's possibilities for this PCB on its own to be hugely beneficial for those wanting to kind of build products. And we've wanted something like this for so long. So I'm really really positive about this actually i think this is going to be great and i just think this is literally a brand new chapter and this is going to start so many things i mean think about all those operating systems now that could potentially get a good publicity kick by having a really easy accessible de facto standard machine that you could then run your ubuntu's your linuxes risk os will be there very shortly i i'm not sure if the current builds will run on this or not risk os direct is due to be updated to Pi 4 and we're still waiting for it. It's probably going to be delayed because of this now. So why I'm saying that is when the Pi 0 came out originally, we were all told, oh, it was built on the Raspberry Pi 1 hardware. So we all assumed the Raspberry Pi 1 disk images would run and they didn't. It actually needed a firmware update. So I don't know if a Pi, straight Pi 4 disk image would actually run on this brand new unit and I'll be able to answer that in the next 24 hours, hopefully when my unit gets here. Um, it's probably not a big issue, it'd just be a firmware update, mainly on the FAT side, the SD card. So it should be relatively compatible with your existing Pi distributions. I guess the only other slight niggle I have with it is there doesn't appear to be a analog composite or analog audio out. To be honest with you, the dual composite video audio jack on the Pi 3 and Pi 4 have actually been quite problematic with compatibility. It's not a surprise in this day and age that the Pi Foundation have decided just to cut support for it altogether. We're moving away from those kind of old fashioned analog tube type monitors, moving more towards obviously HDMI, DVI type uh, digital connections. So it's not a surprise. I just think for those of us, that especially like the retro gaming and like to plug into analog monitors, it's a shame. Although saying that, you will be able to get adapters to adapt HDMI back down to composite or VGA. So it's not a huge issue, but it's just something to bear in mind. So all in all, this is going to be a really, really exciting product. I can't wait to have a look at it. Thank you for joining me here on the channel. If you haven't done already, don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell me what you think in the comments and we'll probably be back in literally 48 hours time when we'll do a proper review of the brand new Raspberry Pi 400. I've been Tom. Thank you so much for your company and I'll see you real soon. Until next time, bye for now.